Hello and good day, Mike Adcock with an update on severe tropical cyclone Ita. Located south of Papua New Guinea, this brief is based on the 6th Zulu Bureau of Meteorology Advisory from the 9th of April. Uh, take a look at satellite imagery. We do see a consolidating uh, center of circulation with a central dense overcast. Uh, looking at some of the earlier uh, microwave imagery, we do see a tightly curved uh, convective banding starting to wrap into this center now. Uh, as of 6 Zulu or 4 p.m. Papua New Guinea time, uh, the center of circulation was estimated about 65 kilometers south of Bremer Island or 385 kilometers east-southeast of the capital. It is moving off to the west at 15 kilometers per hour. Our winds have increased 150, 150 kilometers per hour with gusts up to 205. That makes it a category 3 on the Bureau of Meteorology scale or category 1 for those using the Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale and our pressure down to 963 hectopascal. Um, looking at the Dvorak analyses, um, interesting really looking at what the Bureau of Meteorology is showing with um, all agencies are generally looking at about a 4.5 to a 5.0. NESDIS JTWC opted to uh, use 4.5 for their initial intensity. That's based on the embedded center. Uh, four and a half really gets you about 145 kilometers per hour, so a little bit less than what Bureau, the Bureau of Meteorology is saying. Um, that being said, uh, Australia is, interestingly enough, opting to go with the model at this point. Um, they use the embedded center as well, got the same 4.5 that NESDIS was saying. Um, but yeah, it, the final T was weighted toward the model expected due to the pattern type used. So uh, 5.0 would normally yield us about 165 kilometers per hour. So right now it looks like uh, Bureau of Meteorology is kind of cutting it in between, going for kind of like a 4.7. So um, nonetheless, the, really, the only outlier is the advanced Dvorak technique, and that is... Uh, significantly lower at a 3.8 current intensity or about 113 kilometers per hour. Uh, the Zero Z surface analysis from the Bureau of Meteorology do have the uh, cyclone there off the uh, eastern tip of Papua New Guinea. The big story that we're going to be focused on is this trough of low pressure across western Queensland as that tracks its way uh, eastward, that's going to help influence the cyclone off toward the south. You see that here in the Bureau of Meteorology track. Again, uh, gales are extending right now about 220 kilometers from the center. So uh, do have a cyclone or um, a gale watch out for uh, all the areas there highlighted in yellow. Um, really see a, a significant threat there in northern Queensland. Um, whether this actually makes landfall near Mel, uh, Cape Melville as indicated here or as some of the models suggest kind of skirting along the coast that's really going to play into how many people are affected by this storm. Um, and it is, it's expected to be a very destructive category 4 uh, as it does make landfall so again the concern is uh, what is going to be the impact to population. Uh, we're also looking at storm surge with this system, uh, damaging waves, currents, um, not only flooding from the storm surge, but flooding from the very heavy rainfall as well. So some that we'll definitely keep an eye on as a cyclone makes landfall. Right now, Bureau of Meteorology is looking at the uh, peak of this storm, again, just prior to landfall, about two days' time with winds sustained at 195 kilometers per hour. That's a category four on the Bureau of Meteorology scale or category three on the Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale. Uh, JTWC, very similar. Uh, they're looking at about 130 kilometers currently and forecasted to intensify to about 105 kilometers as we approach the uh, Queensland coast. Right now, Ida is under the influence of a mid-level ridge. Um, really the uncertainty starts to play in after about two days time where the threat of landfall exists. Uh, we do have that shortwave trough I mentioned earlier moving eastward. That's going to help weaken the subtropical ridge and allow this to be steered off toward the south. Um, the JTWC, they're 
focused more on the Navgym and GFS solutions, which skirts the cyclone off the coast, and that brings more of an impact to a lot of uh, populated locations. So some that we'll definitely continue to monitor. After about day three or so, the system starts to weaken due to the land interaction and then becoming extra tropical thereafter. Here's uh, the GFS and WARF uh, solutions, pretty similar to what we're talking about with G uh, JTWC, turning just prior to landfall and hugging along the coast. And that's gonna be a problem as it affects a significant and uh, significantly more people. Um, also by hugging the coast it won't weaken as quickly and that's kind of indicated here in the model intensity suite uh, just intensifying over the next couple of days and then really just hugging it uh, the coastline and weaken slightly uh, in terms of our observations really not much to talk about we do have a, a location just off to the north surprisingly not a whole lot of winds it does seem to be a little bit protected Let's take a look at that right now. Uh, moderate rainfall, though, falling there in far eastern Papua New Guinea. That is reducing your visibility down to 5 kilometers. But notice the winds, light and variable uh, pressure right now at 1,001.9 hectopascal. Of course, keep it tuned over at westernpacificweather.com. We're going to continue to monitor the progress of ITA as it continues to approach Queensland. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And you can join in on the conversation at storm2k.org. Uh, make sure to follow me for updates in between videos. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day. Be safe out there and take care.